are like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not in my universe. Because your universe is different. Because you're like, look, I, I, I'm a high performer. I wake up, I'm full of energy. And you actually like, you like vibe with that energy uh, when you, you go somewhere, when you show up with that energy when you're on the track, you show up with the energy when you're on camera and, and you can see it, right? Like, like you've got like a, like a little happy, kind of playful, but it's powerful, right? And, and you can turn it on. But most people, when they wake up in the morning, they don't know how to turn it on. And I didn't. Right, and now I know how to turn it on. But it, for me, I had to fix my sleep architecture. And if you, when you look at your sleep monitor, so I'm, I have an Aura Ring. Um, it's O U R A is the company. Um, I've heard those are the best. Those, I mean, that's what has the best reputation. They, they are. And I, I'm an advisor and investor in the company, oh, so I would, I would say that anyway. But um, I wouldn't lie if it wasn't true. I validated this with Dan Gartenberg, a sleep scientist from the University of Wisconsin, who's gone through with a million dollar grant and studied this compared to other things. And I really feel confident that it's the best, but is your watch good enough? Sure. And what I recommend people do is track what you hack. If you wake up feeling great all the time, there's one or two things going on. You could have no awareness. You're like, I think I'm feeling great, but there's 10 levels above that that you've never accessed. But I don't think that's true for you, right? Because you wouldn't show up in your life the way you do if that was the case. So then you don't need to fix your sleep. So don't bother tracking it and go track something that matters to you. Because if you track everything, you just fall in this, this pit of, oh my God, maybe I didn't do it right. Am I perfect enough? And it creates anxiety. You can just toss all that, track what you hack. That's what I worry about is that with people, they let this be their dictator on whether or not they have a good day or don't have a good day in their mind. Cause they're like, oh man, I only got five minutes of REM sleep tonight. And I thought I feel great. Like I thought I had a great night's sleep. And I just think that that can be a little bit. So at least we're the best of the wearables if you're going to do it. Um, but, but sleep, very important. I've always been very perplexed by my sleep. And I'm, I know I can be sound like a dick when I say I don't really need sleep. I truly could. I mean, I want eight hours and try. So I wish I could get eight hours, but truly my number is more like six and a half to seven. And that's like me doing great. Um, but I could pretty f well function on five. Okay. We're wired the same way. Um, there's some genetic stuff that, there, but I'm going to set you free of that concern. The largest study ever done of sleep was 1.2 million people tracked over three years. And that is an enormous amount of data. And it's the only one that had enough granularity to look at the differences between six and a half versus seven versus seven and a half versus eight. Guess how long the people who live the longest sleep? Eight, I would think. That's what you think, right? They sleep yeah. six and a half hours a night. They don't sleep eight hours a night. So you're actually sleeping the amount of time that a healthy person sleeps. It's not because less sleep makes you live longer. It's because healthy people need less sleep. So if you're getting enough of the right nutrients, you're living in an environment that's supportive of your biology, you, it's okay to feel rested and get six and a half hours of sleep. There is really good data to support that. If you sleep eight hours a night, you die more from all cause than people who sleep six and a half hours on average. And if you need nine hours of sleep, you should really be careful because the risks of sleeping nine hours a night, of needing to do that, are greater than the risks of sleeping five and a half hours a night. Wow. Okay, so don't push yourself to get eight hours. I don't, I don't get eight hours on weekends. I don't need it. Like I, I've gotten five times this year I've had more than eight hours of sleep. Right. right. And that's okay. I sleep six, right. six and a half hours. I'm totally well, good to go. You've changed my life now in two different ways. <laughs> One, you just told me my sleep is somewhat okay. ideal. Yeah. And then the other thing that you told me when you interviewed me was that I could eat duck eggs instead of chicken eggs and I should be fine. And... <laughs> literally like changed my life. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm hey. running low. I only have eight left right now. And I'm like, where am I going to find a farmer's market? But, um, but, uh, but that changed my life. So I, I have to say thank you um, very oh. much for that. You're so welcome. So there's one other thing I want to talk to you about, and it's, it's, it, it like gets into ethics and I'm just kind of curious of your thoughts about it. But I, I, my brain has, I watched something about this a few years ago. It wasn't the greatest of docs. Um, then I watched another doc about this the other day and I thought that's amazing. And I didn't even realize it. But before I watched that about two weeks ago, I bought a book called Code Breaker. And I have, I, in my mind, I'm so curious about CRISPR. 
And I'm ah. kind of curious from your perspective, what being being a hacker, being someone who's trying to idealize things and optimize your body, how, you know, what your thoughts about CRISPR are. Maybe it's, it, are, do you check in? Do you know about CRISPR much? Oh, yeah. Okay, so maybe explain to people what it is, because again, I'm I'm really scratching the surface with it, but I'm sure. very curious, and then I'm just kind of curious to hear your thoughts. What you think, you know, where what what's coming down the pipeline, and if you'd be willing to do it ever. CRISPR is a relatively new technology that lets you edit a specific gene and take a very small part of it. Before we had sort of very primitive ways of trying to change genetics around. So we can now, with precision, pull out just a little bit of this and put a little bit of something else in. And of course, biohackers like me are saying, wow, maybe we can fix genetic weaknesses that we have. Right? And I believe that it's 100% ethical for us to have full control of our own biology. So if I want to get giant hoops in my ears, I want to get weird piercings, or heck, if I want to remove my left arm for cosmetic reasons, <laughs> it's my right to do that. It's just dumb. Okay, but it's my right to be dumb because it's my body and my body, my choice, right? <laughs> so um, that said, I think there are great risks that some countries are, and I actually interviewed someone about this on my show a while ago uh, who couldn't talk about some of it because of his government connections, but um, there are countries, probably including the US, but certainly some other countries who are doing that science fiction, we're going to use CRISPR to edit humans and make super soldiers from the embryo. If you are going to reproduce Right now, I don't believe it's ethical to use CRISPR to edit your own genome in a way that could be passed down into our germline because we just don't know enough. But if you wanted to do uh, what I'm planning to do um, using uh, Liz Parrish's work, and she's been on my show, is you can go in and you can change things, things like mTOR, the ability to put on muscle. You can fix metabolic problems. In my case, I'm relatively sensitive to environmental toxins like toxic mold because of something called HLA-DR4. Can I edit those with CRISPR? Not yet, but will I? And, and would I? Yes. And in fact, I'm talking about that at the biohacking conference uh, September 17th in Orlando. I've been putting this conference on every year and I invite people who are doing potential gene editing for humans. Right now it's to treat diseases, but dying of old age is a disease and I wanna treat aging with CRISPR. So I think it's going to happen, but for I don't think we have a right to do it in a way that makes us pass it down to our offspring. I do know one very wealthy person who did go through and I don't believe he used CRISPR, he used another technique, but basically removed cystic fibrosis from his germline. And he did that, this is a very wealthy individual because <laughs> most people couldn't do that and also there's secrecy and stuff. Um, but overall, I, um, I'm not concerned about someone doing something stupid to themselves because we do crazy things. You know what we do sometimes? We get in cars and we drive really, really fast where we might hit a wall. <laughs> Somehow like that's, that's okay, okay, but it's not it okay, okay to like get healthier with something. 